Welcome to Animorphs Anonymous, the podcast where we casually discuss the Animorphs one book at a time. I'm Casey. And I'm Alex. And we're going to talk you through the plot of each book. But more accurately, take you on tangent trips, factoid forays, and say, well, actually, as much as possible. Join us on the 1st and the 15th of each month, and we'll take you along on our mission. And we promise to have you back under the two-hour time limit. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Incredible as it may seem, both the observations of science and the evidence of our eyes lead to the inescapable assumption that those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army. My tummy hurts so bad. Why did I do this? I don't know. Are you going to be okay? Yeah. Are you sure you want to talk about animals for like four hours with I your tummy I do. Hurting? I do. Then we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's lots of acts in this book, and that will make everything better for me. That is true. There's also lots of Tobias, very unexpectedly. Yay! Yeah, Tobias is like a huge player kind of in these later books. Yeah. I feel like. And he's awesome. Yeah. Does this mean we're transitioning into talking about this book? I mean, we, we could do that. I don't know if... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's do it. What did you think of this book? Wow, not what I was expecting. I thought <laughs> we were going to have a fucking giant pit of despair because we're like four books away from the end. But instead, it was this beautiful, hilarious romp adventures of these three wonderful boys. Crazy action movie. And it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and it the whole time I was reading it, I just kept thinking, wow, this really feels like one of the earlier books that Applegate wrote. Because, like, there's some, you know, scary or violent bits, but, like, for it's so joyous. And, like, you know, I was reading it, and I'm like, oh, nothing bad's gonna happen to these kids, because, like, we're, like, three quarters of the way through the book, and everything's just been, like, hilarious antics, so they're, they're gonna be fine. <laughs> nothing terrible happened to the kids, per se, but also um, one of the most horrific scenes that they straight up like said black and white here's what happened i think is in this book mm. not like gory but like there is one part of the book where like it happened and i was like oh whoa fuck oh no we'll get there it's okay fine. i'm like i can't think of what that was <laughs> i was just so focused on tobias driving the limousine <laughs> Oh my god, that was so good. <laughs> oh, and the tank it adventure. So oh my god. The tank adventure, the limo adventure, the duck the yacht catching. adventure. Yeah. The duck catching. Fuck, it was like a fucking like, I don't know. It's just a oh. silly action movie. Axe had not one, but two majestic leaps that were backlit. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I kind of feel like this is the last, like, fun book before the very end. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's gotta be, like... I just don't know how to feel anymore. Bad, probably. I mean, I don't know. This was a great book. Yeah. We had so much yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> and Marco's a fucking goof. He is a goof. This whole book. <laughs> oh, God. Like, he's still just so happy. Just coming off the last book when I accused him of smoking a whole bowl of marijuana. <laughs> the whole bowl of marijuana. <laughs> the marijuana. Um, but, like, that continues. And it's just so... It's like, thank you, Lisa Harkrader, for this, this beautiful moment of levity in these trying times. Lisa Harkrader really killed it. And then, so I was just looking up just before we hit record what the other books she wrote were. And... The last one she wrote was Tobias's book where he finds mm -hmm. his mom. And then before that, it was The Australian Adventure. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But Lisa Harkrader this time sat down, read the whole series. <laughs> and, like, internalized it. So many callbacks in this yeah, book, too, yeah. to, like, early Very books. early. It was I great. I loved it. I loved it so much. I had a lot of fun with this book. Good. <laughs> okay, I can't. We'll talk about it within as we're talking about the series. I was going to tell you another favorite thing of mine, but it comes up <laughs> pretty, pretty late in the game, so I don't want to give it cool, away cool, now. Cool. 
Yeah, so Lisa Harkrader, we both like this book. Do we want to have any last first thoughts before last we first thoughts? start? Last first thoughts. Nope. I'm ready any last to relive the beautiful last... thing. Okay, let's relive this wonderful, wonderful book. So we start out with Marco diving at full speed towards the train they're watching, feeling pretty good about his cool, cool dive before Tobias rockets past him in a spiral of death. He's like... Hey, what the fuck? Give me this one. But Tobias is like, listen, I only have like two hobbies and this is one of them. (laughs) So let me be good at it. (laughs) Um, Marco kind of agrees at this point and he's like, all right. So he turns his attention towards the train hauling tanks towards the city where he very proudly says that he knows exactly what kind of tanks these are, which are M1s. I wrote it down later. I think they're M1s. But he knows this because he's played a video game about tanks for like a thousand hours. Tank simulator. And so now he's a tank expert. (laughs) Tanksimulator.com. Yeah, he's just basically played a tank sim. And he's like very much into these tanks from very early on. Good. They had all been looking into the sudden movement of these tanks for several days. But they could find no mention of it on any of the normal channels. The Chi didn't know anything. Marco doesn't think that this has Visitor 3's calling card on it, but he's still like, I'm probably missing something here, before finally deciding it's just his normal paranoia, and screw it, he's just going to go in and see what happens, in non-Marco fashion. So he dives, he lands on the train, his talons find a place to latch onto, he crouches down, pulls his wings in, and Tobias just basically does the same shit, but way cooler. (laughs) That's basically the premise of the entire opening part of this book where they're both birds. <laughs> Tobias does everything Marco does, but Aww, better. Oh, poor Marco. <laughs> I feel bad for him. Again, this is I Tobias was being facetious. Hobby. <laughs> okay, good. Poor Marco's <laughs> fragile ego about how he can't fly is good. I also like that Tobias calls it his red tail spiral of death. Like, he's <laughs> thought about the name he a lot. He named his maneuver. <laughs> oh my <Yes>. god. <laughs> So Marco's like, hey, there should be people watching this train with these tanks. Why is no one watching this? Like, why is nobody here? This is very odd. And then Tobias goes like, well, I wouldn't say no one's watching us. And like Marco follows his line of sight up to this red-tailed hawk that's leading this squadron of eagles and falcons. (laughs) And they are flying in formation. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. (laughs) Oh my god. I just I just read this and I you know my first thought was oh shit they used the morphing cube and the second one was just like you you look like a raptor convention like Tobias said yep. back in the day and like throughout this whole book it's just like these fucking people these controllers have no idea how to do morph good <laughs> they don't and like there's so many times where like they have like a like jump scare kind of because they're like oh that could be a controller and then it's not and it's like okay so they're thinking like how they would do it but like the controllers are so I bad at this stormtroopers <laughs> they're just they are oh especially in the zoo scene but we'll talk about that later yeah i was just i was just thinking that and then thinking that other thing you said those two things you said i thought both of okay, those things <laughs> okay <laughs> Oh, man. So once they see this fucking squadron of eagles flying at them, (laughs) Tobias drops down to, like, underneath the tank, and he's hiding out where he can watch them but not be seen. Marco is kind of pinned in place. Like, he can't hide underneath anything without drawing attention to himself, so he just kind of hunkers down and hopes that he wouldn't be noticed. And he's like, of course I am going to be noticed. It's just I'm doing this until to buy time, I guess. I don't know. Um, Tobias privately says to Marco, these guys are total noobs. They're flying into the wind. They're flying in formation and they're going to be exhausted. These guys are idiots. <laughs> and he's not wrong. Yes. So they watch as these birds dive and land on the tank while the red tail kited above them. And okay, I did love how much of this book they like explained about the animals. Like it was back to that initial premise of we're here to learn about right. animals. So, like, them talking about kiting, the way that they were talking about the ducks, it it was awesome. I loved all of that part of this book. Yeah. So, anyways, right. yes, kiting. It was so yeah, good! Yeah, and you mentioned earlier that this felt like an early book, and, and yeah, oh my god, no wonder I loved it so much. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was like a big part of it. It was oh. really good. Like if the Ghost Riders were like this on throughout the whole series, oh, it, man. we would never would have had a Helmicron rabies or a book. Jake is a man. Jake is a man. <laughs> <laughs> A big strong man. God, I hate that book. <laughs> Sorry. So <much>. Anyway. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's. Uh, anyways, okay. So, um, yes, they're observing the train cars. Marco asks Tobias if they should be hopeful that these were the auxiliary animorphs, and then a moment later, the red tail spots Marco, and Marco's like, "I swear," he smiled before he dives down at Marco who, instead of freaking out because he's smart and these guys are dumb, he just kind of starts, like, spreading his wings and, like, puffing out his feathers, just trying to look really big and angry in his best impression of an angry bird. (laughs) And in reality, all he's doing is covering that there's a pipe behind him. So Tobias is under this tank and out of sight, and he goes, Hey, Marco, did you know that there's a bird hobbling down (laughs) at you? And Marco goes, Uh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god, I love all of this Tobias Marco interaction. It's so good the whole time. And Axe, yeah. too. Oh good my time. god, so yeah. good. So yeah, this hawk is hurtling down at Marco, and Marco's holding his ground, and like they're counting down like six feet, four feet, two feet. And then Marco just kind of dives sideways out of the way, and with a thunk, the red tail hits the pipe head first, and then falls onto the train car below them with his neck at this weird twisted angle. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. Ow. Oh, there's way worse part. Anyways. (laughs) So Marco and Tobias are like, all right, let's get the fuck out of here. But as they dive low off the side of the train, they run directly into this squadron of eagle controllers. And they start trying to, like, bank away, and they're gaining some ground, because of course they're smaller, they're more maneuverable. Um, the best maneuver they do is they shoot between the rail cars and like the tracks and stuff. And the eagles have no business getting under there. They are way too big to get through there. Uh, but then the falcons start coming in and they start like, you know, dive bombing them and hitting them and actually landing some decent hits. And they're on this full on dog fight with all of like, I don't, I don't even remember if they said how many, but there is many, many, many of these birds and um, finally, one of the eagles gets a hold of Marco by the back, and Marco starts screaming in pain. And Tobias goes like, "Marco, get your wings out of the way! Get get him out of the way!" And he starts rocketing in and smashing this eagle who has Marco. Like he just he hits him in the leg, he hits him in the wing, he hits him in the back, and he's like just repeatedly landing blows on this eagle that cannot keep up with both Tobias being faster, better at flying, but also Marco still struggling. So Tobias dives in, rakes him again, and finally this eagle lets go, and Marco plummets to the train car below him and lands flat out on his back. Um, He starts demorphing. His whole bottom half is paralyzed, so, like, it's a really weird demorph. Like, it, it almost read, like, the bottom half of him did not start demorphing until the top half was basically, weird. like, caught up. Yeah, it was almost like... It had to heal its way down once he got paralyzed. It was very weird, but kind of a cool detail that they don't really draw attention to. Yeah, because morphing is always so random, but, like, Mm -hmm. there's got to be, like, some science to it. And especially if, like, full... Okay, I don't know. Maybe it's just because, like, the auxiliary Animorphs thing we just got in the last book, but, like, it's really interesting that, like, being paralyzed could potentially affect the order in which things Mm -hmm. morph. This is, this is total just bullshit. <laughs> I just thought it was cool. <laughs> um, so he sees this falcon lining up to dive at him again, and he wants to be fully human because if he's bigger, he can live through a bird attack. Better than if he's a bird. So he keeps morphing. He gets to human, but that does not deter this falcon from diving at him, sinking its talons into his boy leg, and taking out a golf ball-sized chunk leg. of meat. <laughs> his boy leg. Would that happen? <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> they puncture. They yeah, don't I was tear. About to say. You would, like, like your flesh yeah. has to be pretty malleable to have that happen. He has tissue flesh where it just like it comes Ew. apart at the barest hint. I don't of... like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just reporting what the book said. There's no way that would happen. They would just puncture and then. Ouch. I mean, it yeah. would hurt. He's not. He's not wrong that it would hurt, but. What if it got stuck in his yeah. leg? I mean, moving that fast, it would probably just rip through, but... 
Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, so for the most, the reason they don't really get stuck is because that channel that they have on the back of their talons that allows the the blood and stuff to pour oh. out. So it's not just like it's a straight, you know, thing like curved thing going into the leg that it could potentially get stuck. But that channel is basically to prevent that from happening. It's to leave a little bit of airspace once it like punctures in and cool. through, so that they have like they don't get suctioned oh. in. Yeah. Also, falcons generally punch because yeah. they dove full on. Falcon yeah. punch. They so they, yeah. So this thing had to slow down, talon his boy leg, his and then fly leg. off. Um, and then Marco's like basically like fuck this, I'm gonna become Big Jim. And this is like the first time in how long he actually calls him Big Jim I know. again. I Big loved this. Jim. Big Jim, Big Jim. So he morphs to Big Jim. And once he gets there, he's like, I'm going to go ahead and just free up one of these tanks back here. <laughs> Thank God I <laughs> Thank God I played Tank Warrior for 28,000 hours because I know exactly where the toolkit is on this train car because of the tank wow. game. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so he goes to the front of the train to grab this toolbox that he knew was there because of Tank Guy game. And then uh, he breaks open the lock, he grabs a bunch of tools, just kind of tosses them aside, like, ah, here's a pickaxe thing, and here's a big stabby thing, and <laughs> that's literally, like, that's not me not knowing things, that's how he okay, narrates it. Like, what are tools? We just don't know. That's basically what he did. He's like, ah, here's a shovel. I do not need this. Like, here's this, this axe. I do not need this. Here's a stabby thingy. I do not need it. Like, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Um, and then he grabs a sledgehammer and he takes it with him because he's like, fuck yeah, we're going to go fuck it up, get this tank. He starts ripping out chains and like knocking out the, the things that are holding the tank in place with the struts. I assume it's just like a chunk of wood. Like it's just literally like a stopper, like used for a trailer. So it can't, this was a very detailed scene about how he freed the tank and I wasn't quite following it. It was, so, okay, it was detailed slash not detailed. It was super detailed in the way, like, he moved up the train. This is how he moved down the train. Here were all the aspects of the train that he maneuvered around. Yeah. Here was, like, how he broke the lock. Here is how he broke the chains. But also, they never once say, like, he knocked out, like, the tire stop that was there. Like, it was just, like, he knocked out the block. And it was, like, well, I guess that's what you call it. But, like, we just spent all this time talking about these chains. Maybe yeah. we should name this thing. And as somebody who wouldn't buy a tire stop and would just use a block of wood like a normal human being, I too would call it a block. <laughs> so I now know, I don't know what it's called now. Mm, couldn't help you. I'm so sorry. Couldn't help you. But uh, yeah, no. So he like sledgehammers these things out. He basically just gets a bunch of the chain part like ripped out and like unsecured so that there's like room to maneuver them and then just like slides them off the tank is what generally happens. Once he has all the slack in the chain, he's like, all right, cool. He grabs a sledgehammer, hurdles it up towards the <laughs> engine, like just fucking lobs it towards the yeet. guy. <laughs> he's just like, yeet the sledgehammer. And then a second later, the train screeches to a halt. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so good. Because I just imagined him, like, doing all this work to, like, free the thing and then just, like, literally, like, over his shoulder, like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> And because he's a gorilla, it, like, flew a lot further than anyone thought. Exactly. <sighs> exactly. But yeah, so once the brakes are hit, Marco jumps into the tank, Tobias dives in after him, and Marco slams the top of it shut. And Tobias is basically like, now what? Like, you clearly didn't think this through. Now we are just trapped in a tank. And Marco's like, no, now we're good to go. This is excellent. And Tobias is like, we're dead meat. Yurks, the Yurk reinforcements are on the way. The Yurks are right on the tank. They're sitting on the tank. We can see them right there, Marco. Just waiting. <laughs> um, and they also see the train operators walking towards them, looking angry and holding the sledgehammer. And Marco's just like, this is all in my master plan. <laughs> So Marco demorphs to give himself a little more room, and Tobias morphs to his human self. And once they're there, Marco's like, all right, let's do this, and gets into the driver's seat. 
And uh, Tobias is just like, ah, so we're taking this thing for a joyride. And then he grabs a helmet off the wall and he's like, I should probably put this on. And Marco's like, you should, because that wire leading to the front of your helmet is a microphone and it's also a headset in there. And Tobias is like, great. I feel like Britney Spears with this thing on. And Marco's like, unfortunately for me, you don't look like wow. her. Ah. Wow. <laughs> I just like... Okay, this led me into a spiral of thought where I actually had to, like, stop reading because I realized how right Tobias was that Britney Spears is one of the few people I think of that always has that little boom mic. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think of other singers that, like, have that a lot of the time, and I can't think of a lot. Is it, like, would you say it's, like, iconic to her? I I don't want to say that because, like, other people use it. Right. But, like... But you... Yeah. There's an association there. There's absolutely an association I have that, like, Britney Spears is, she has that boom mic a lot. Did she, was she known for, like, lip syncing on stage? Because I wonder if that has something to do with it. I don't know. I feel like maybe, didn't she have some big scandal on some, like, late night TV show where the music went out and she was totally off? Oh, no. That might not have been her, but it might have been her. I mean... To be fair, like, I can't understand, like, people who can dance exuberantly for hours and also sing at the same time. That just seems insane to me. That's true. Only the Spice Girls can do that. Yeah. Like, I would, I would, I would, I would almost forgive somebody for lip syncing if they were just dancing all the time. Apropos of nothing, but when I saw Panic at the Disco last winter, um, I don't know when it was, but anyway, he was like, he was doing like 17 songs in a row running around stage and like real singing at the same time and i was like brandon take a break oh my god drink some water are you okay <laughs> like jesus <laughs> that's intense maybe cocaine i just keep all. thinking of like flogging molly where they would do one song take a 20 minute break to just like talk about fucking ireland and drinking <laughs> drink an entire beer maybe a beer and a half and then like do one more song <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's cool <laughs> that's that's like in my mind how you do the perfect concert right one song 20 minutes two beers <laughs> second song another 20 minutes two to three beers one more song just keep doing that like, <laughs> <laughs> until the three hours is up <laughs> or until whenever you feel like it, t- stopping that's true their concerts were always very long but the other thing that always happened was I, this is so bad. I, I've been, I've loved them for so long and yet I cannot remember the guy's name. But like, he also does this thing that always blew my mind where like, they would just riff mid song for like 10 to 15 minutes sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes dive into a completely different song and then back to the original. And that always blew my mind. (laughs) But then they drink like three beers. Oh my God. (laughs) Oh. So anyways, that I think is the way to do it. And the other, the extreme opposite of that is Pentatonix, who just sang only with mouth words and danced, not super exuberantly, but somewhat. Yeah. And then they would be like, they would go for a while, but then like take a break. They'd be like, we'll let Kevin play for a little bit, do a cello, because then we don't have to sing. <laughs> Kevin, go do a cello. <laughs> Kevin, go cello. <laughs> and then cello, cello you, you have a bass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I guess what I'm saying is I've never seen Britney Spears live, but I absolutely believe she was known for having that boom microphone. Okay, I'll buy it. Tobias gets the headset. This is very important. He does not look like Britney Spears, but he feels like Britney Spears, and that's really all that matters because it's Tobias, bitch. <laughs> can do it. <laughs> Marco bitch. <laughs> um <laughs> so Marco's like really talking up this tank video game again. Like Tobias, I can do this. I'm I'm positive I can do this because I have played the video game. What he doesn't tell Tobias is also every single button is extremely well labeled. He says something like a three year old with like what was it, a third grader that could read could steal a tank from the military? <laughs> it was some awesome comparison like that. Um so yeah, he's like, whatever, this is fine. So he starts up the tank, 
And he's like, and also don't worry about driving this tank off of this rail car. I'm not going to flip it over. I've definitely seen tanks take bigger leaps than this on National Geographic. And Tobias is like, great, a video game and TV. I super trust you that nothing's going to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. So basically he then goes, okay, great. And then like hurdles them off the edge of this train car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, Marco, you can't drive a car. What makes you think you can drive a tank? But I guess he's actually better at driving a tank than a car. So He's much better at driving a tank than a car. And, like, I feel like part of this is, like, they're not on a roadway yet. Uh, it's also crushy, so it's, like, less crashy because you can drive over the things instead of through the things. <laughs> the, these are the two points I have. That's it. I made it sound like I had a third, but I didn't. Tricked you. I did <laughs> Um, yeah, so the nose of this tank dips down, and some of the controller birds, like, freak out. They're like, oh, shit, so they take off. And even Tobias is like, great, this is fucking great, we're all gonna die. And then, like, the treads hit the dirt and start pulling them along, and Marco finds some sort of, like, opening in the trees, so he's, like, just cruising through there, and it is an M1. Great. I got it right. All right. Um, some of the controllers that abandon them land back on the tank while they're driving around, and, like, Tobias is like, uh, you know, we probably shouldn't drive back home because, like, Jake doesn't want us to bring controllers home. Just thinking this through. <laughs> it's all Jake. It's all... Everyone else would be fine with it. Everyone else is cool with it. Jake wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us all think it's cool. Yeah. And Marco's like, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what you want from me. And then a second later, the gun turret starts swinging around and, like, knocks one of the eagles out cold. Like, just fucking cold clocks this thing <laughs> and marco's like uh tobias that was you right and he's like yeah i found this manual it's pretty dry reading but like it has some good info in it we can definitely use some of this <laughs> and marco is now very pleased with this turn of events and he keeps plugging along until tobias starts screaming stop stop and marco's like what i can't see what you're talking about and tobias is like yeah well i can and they stopped and tobias is like we're like a foot away from driving off this cliff. And Marco's like, all right, great. I'll just reverse the tank. No big problem. So he hits it in reverse, (laughs) hits the gas, and the tank lurches forward and more screaming happens. (laughs) 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 Oh, Tobias has no faith in him. (laughs) If this were, if this were a TV show or something, I just like picture like a wide shot and the tank moves forward and it's just like muffled screaming coming from it. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> um, so Marco stops the tank, very carefully resets that again, and then like slowly like gives it a little bit of gas, and the tank starts rolling backwards. And like Marco at this point is just like, la-da-da-da-da, great. And he like steers away from the edge of the cliff, and he just goes right back to top speed, which he says is like, this baby will do 65 miles an hour all day, as he like hurdles down adjacent to a cliff. Oh my god. (laughs) The good news is the cliff incident got rid of all the controllers who assumed that they were going to (laughs) die the minute this happened. Um, So Marco navigates them onto a highway. And Tobias is like, I'm glad you found the roadway, but like we are going the wrong direction. And Marco seems really unfazed. He's like, nah, they'll get out of the way. And like (laughs) car after car is like swerving around. Oh no. (laughs) There's a van that like jumps up onto the curb. (laughs) And then they see this truck barreling down on them. And Marco's like, he'll move. But the guy's, like, barreling down, and, like, he can see the guy's face through the window, and the guy's, like, laughing with this maniacal glee. Oh, what and, then, the- <laughs> and then the gun turret swings around at him, and Marco sees the guy, like, freak out and swerve, and Marco's like, really? you can't shoot him, and Tobias is like, he doesn't know that I can't shoot him. <laughs> so he was okay playing chicken with his tank and possibly like- <laughs> crashing into the tank, and I don't think he would have come out very well. I don't know, actually. I feel like the tank would have definitely won. Yeah, I mean, but but as soon as the gun turret swings around, it's like, oh, no, this is dangerous. I Okay, I don't know what my favorite part about that scene is. Because, like, there's the beauty of them playing chicken until he's threatened with being shot, which somehow <laughs> changes the stakes. There's Marco not being willing to, like, get off the highway the wrong direction. But then there's 
Tobias swinging the gun turret around and Marco saying you can't shoot him and Tobias going, he doesn't know that. Like, <laughs> that interaction to me was just beautiful. <laughs> uh, this whole scene is just so delightful. The next scene, also delightful in a very different manner. <laughs> that was a really long mission. <laughs> yeah, and they stole a tank, which is like... Yeah, I thought that was going to be like a couple chapters long when the book first started, but it was like eight chapters of them with this tank adventure. Of just tank adventure. They're like, listen, <laughs> we've worked for 51 books to get them in a tank. We cannot waste the opportunity. <laughs> And then, like, I feel like it didn't even really matter. It was just, like, several chapters of them just goofing off in a tank. And it easily could have, like, cut to just Jake being like, okay, so you stole a tank. And then they recap it. Yes. It was so, like, gratuitous. I loved it. (laughs) I'm so glad we got to go on tank adventures. (laughs) Tank adventures with Tobias and Marco. (laughs) And, like, Tobias is dry wit through the entire (laughs) And I was complaining that Marco and Tobias don't have enough, like, goofy friend time. And I got what I wanted, so. You did. You did. Um, Okay, let's go to this next chapter. Because, like, the first four sentences I just want to talk about. (laughs) Uh, So we cut to Fireside War Council with uh, with Jake and also Toby and Ava are there. But it's the Animorphs, Ava, Toby. And Jake's like, so where did you stash the tank? Like, we just immediately go into tank talk. <laughs> <laughs> tank talk with Jake. <laughs> and Marco's like, you know Chapman's nice two-story home? Oh and Jake God. just sighs deeply. And he goes, how many stories is it now? And Marco's like, well, like zero. But the deck is going to be really good firewood. <laughs> and if he, if he still had a fireplace, it would have been good firewood. <laughs> no. And then, throwback, Rachel goes... You leveled Melissa's house? And then we get this whole, like, Rachel and Melissa were friends at the beginning of the series. And then she never came back. (laughs) (laughs) I was glad that Rachel said that because I was also like, oh, no, poor Melissa. (laughs) I felt bad for Melissa. But I did like that she, like, went after Marco. She was like, you leveled Melissa's house. And then she turns to Tobias and goes, and you went along with it? (laughs) (laughs) She knows. (laughs) She knows. And uh, then Marco goes, calm down. Nobody was home. Not even Fluffer McNutter. And Rachel goes, it's Fluffer McKinney. He's back. He's back in a big way. Thank God. Thank God he's here to save us all. I missed him so much. (laughs) And then Tobias in the ultimate, I will reassure my girlfriend who's upset. He goes, your friend's fine. She's just homeless. It's no big deal. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) This, like, definitely set the tone for the book. Like, <laughs> dear fucking God. It's like, everything is shit, but hey. <laughs> Whatever, YOLO. It's all tank. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, my God. I Yeah. Especially after, like, the, <laughs> the Cassie book that was, like, shit. just... Oh my god, so, like, awful. Everything was super well thought out. This one is eight fucking chapters of driving a tank around. (laughs) Oh, I needed this. This is the book I didn't know I needed. (laughs) Also, Champ is there. Yay! Champ is there. They are petting him. Yay! (laughs) Tobias, in particular, loves this dog. Good. He's a good boy. And I love him, He's a good, good boy. I, too, love him. And I'm glad that Champ got to go into this beautiful retirement home. He wasn't, like, sacrificed. Like, oh, we have to leave the seeing eye dog. It's like, we also evacuate the seeing eye dog, and now he just gets to play frisbee all day. I don't know how they got him to the hork Valley, but I don't care. (laughs) It doesn't matter. I hope they carried him on their backs for 15 miles. I know, because it's like, okay, they would have been hawks, and they would have just flown there. But, like, what about the dog? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> They're like, we're bringing the dog with us, whatever it takes. <laughs> I don't care what we have to do. We got to get this dog here. We got to do it now. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's the kind of people I respect. Me too. Got to bring the dog. Too. I hope it was like at the end of Warhorse, where like 
he finds his horse after all this time. He is blinded. He describes this horse, which again, the blind thing. Oh, crossover and horse and more horse. So he (laughs) describes his horse, though, because he's like, I know that's my horse. I raised him. He's my beautiful horse. And then they're like, we can't bring your beautiful horse home because we don't have the funds or something. I don't know. I don't really understand why they couldn't. But like the big army guy said, we can't bring your horse home. So everybody just like pooled their money to pay. I was the tuition. (laughs) The travel tuition for the horse. The travel tuition for the horse to go to college in England. (laughs) I'm going to horse school. Thank God I write down what happens in these books because can you imagine if I was just describing this from memory? Like, here's what happened in the book. The horse had to go to horse school in England. (laughs) Anyway, so what I imagine is that I don't know. Toby seems like a buzzkill. Toby's like, we can't bring the dog back. It's too hard. And all of the animals are like, we'll pay the tuition to bring the horse back to dog school. (laughs) I'm crying. Oh, no. Now I want to watch War Horse again. (laughs) Me too. I don't... Okay. I know that a lot of people shit on that movie, but it's a really good horse, guys. It's a good horse. And Tom Hiddleston's in it. Is he? <laughs> yeah. I think. I only remember the horse. Good. That's all that matters. It's called War remember. Horse, not War Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> Would you watch a movie named War Tom Hiddleston? <laughs> <laughs> oh, everything hurts when I'm dying. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm <laughs> crying so hard. I too. Oh my god. I feel like Marco just drove a tank through my sanity. <laughs> Um, let's just take this to Depression Town. So, <laughs> oh yes, oh god. Tobias says his homeless line to Rachel, which is yeah. very bad. Tobias, that was a very bad thing you said. <laughs> and then they all like expectantly turn to Jake, waiting for his normal reprimand or like barely concealed laughter comment, like what he would normally do in this situation. And there's nothing. Like he just <sighs> does not respond. So sad. Then we have this whole thing where Marco's like, I've noticed this change in my friend and I feel horribly guilty because, like, I, I'm i happy. Like, I'm not happy that this war is happening, but overall, I'm pretty happy because my family's back. My parents are more in love than ever. I feel like just, like, dancing around the valley singing. Like, my life is great. And Jake has nothing. And then he also goes, and I don't know what happens, but, like, all of a sudden, you know, Cassie, who we'd hope would bring Jake back, is just, like, on the outs. Like, Jake won't even acknowledge her. He's very cold towards her. <laughs> like, it's it's so weird reading this, and, like, we know what happened, but nobody else knows what happened. Oh, my God. Like, oh, no. Yeah. I, I was wondering if... if- they were gonna tell everyone but they haven't yet and it's oh they haven't and it does not come up during this book it i oh god crazy and there's just a brutal like moment coming up oh my god uh okay so toby then asks what information did you get on this mission and marco just says well all we know is that the trains were being moved by the national guard at least the regular uninfected national guard and That leads into this whole conversation about, like, okay, is there an infected National Guard? Is that possible? And they turn towards Ava, and she's like, when I was still a controller, there was no plan for this. So an uninfested National Guard is probable right now, because if there was a plan, I would have known about it. And also, it would take months to enact, so if they had started this plan, it still wouldn't be complete. And Jake goes, okay, let's make some assumptions that they did do this plan This is what they're moving towards. And we're kind of viewing the very precipice of where they start to infest all of the people. Like they're in stage one of infesting the National Guard. So he comes up with this plan where he's like, okay, some of us are going to go cause issues and distractions uh, because the Guard will have to come to us. We're going to go get James and the ancillary team. We're going to have them do some other distraction missions. And then a small group will go get the governor and talk to him. And Casey goes, oh, or Casey, my God. <laughs> I'm in the book. It's me. You're in the book. You're in the book now. It's ever since you said war, Tom Hiddleston, I just, <laughs> my mind is gone. Oh, no. <clears throat> oh, my God. It's all I can think of. Everything I say is tainted with that. Oh, no. So Cassie stands up to volunteer to go talk to the governor. And before she can even finish her sentence, Jake cuts her off with this very harsh, No. And everybody is shocked into silence. And Jake then, like, turns around and says, I need someone I can trust. Oh! 
Ah! And like, that's it. That's all he says. Nothing else. Nobody questions it. Like, He's just like... Like, why, why would he say that in front of everyone? Because, like, clearly they've decided not to tell the rest of the team, but he, like, so obviously kind of called her out in that moment. So it's like, what was... Oh, shit. I don't know. I feel like it's, like, one of those really bad, like, we're not going to tell everybody because you don't want to spread drama, but that doesn't mean you're not going to put in snide comments constantly because you don't yeah. actually agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Aww. Axe also kind of betrayed Jake, but I don't know. He's not kind of treating it the same way. I mean, not they weren't the same situation or anything, but... But he did. I don't know. I, I mean, it just... I guess it just wasn't as personal. <laughs> true. True, 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 true. So yeah, Jake's pissed. Uh, and he goes, Marco, Tobias, and Axe, you'll go talk to the governor. Marco to talk to him. Tobias because he knows directions and Axe because he'll know if the governor's infested. And uh, then he tells them all to be cool. Get the governor on our side. And Rachel goes, Marco, be cool. We're doomed. Good, good banter there. Great banter. Rachel, only in two seconds of this book. Very cool the whole time. <laughs> Cut to the gardens where Marco <laughs> Tobias... <laughs> this is one of my favorite scenes in all of the series, I will admit. Just before we launch into that. Um, so that, mm-hmm. that Animorphs artist that, that we both like, the one that you have the prints of. Yes. Um, she actually storyboarded this scene, and it's on her website, and I will try and plug that at the end. Please. Cause, I need to see it. Yeah, because, like, I saw that ce- um, that storyboard, like, I think a while ago. It must have been, like, last year. And I remember sending mm-hmm. it to you and being like, Alex, is this a spoiler? And you were like, uh, it's probably fine. And then, Well, I mean, it is probably <laughs> fine. Uh, yeah, it's, like, like... <laughs> apropos of nothing that's really important apart from they acquire a duck. Ooh, big spoiler. Um, yeah. But, like, as soon as they launched into the scene, I was like, this seems familiar, but not too familiar. <laughs> but not too not familiar. It's not a big spoiler. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so they're in this cattail pond, and they are waiting for the ducks to get close enough that they can attempt a grab. Marco is the one that's, like, poised, ready to grab. Uh, they need to get to the capital, which is over 200 miles away, so they need a distance flyers to get there. And Marco is waiting. One is getting closer and closer to him. And he is poised and ready when something wet and heavy slaps onto his head. And Axe, who is standing behind Marco, informs him that there is an amphibian on his head. And Tobias very helpfully says, it's a bullfrog, Axe man. And Marco moves to push it off, but then the duck comes closer, so he just freezes again. And then the bullfrog pees on him. And he's like, oh, fuck, this thing's peeing on me. But the duck is right there. So as soon as the duck starts dipping down to start eating, he pounces, he grabs her, the bullfrog jumps off his head, and he's like, really, now, at this point, you're going to jump off my head? And this duck is, like, quacking and scrabbling against his arm and scratching him because they do have little nails on their little web feet. And um, he's holding on as tight as he can until she bites his nose, and then he just, like, drops the duck. Like, what the fuck? This thing's a menace. (laughs) Not the face, not my beautiful face. Not my beautiful face. And then Axe is determined to help. And so he goes pronking off beautifully in the back of the sun. (laughs) I love it. Just this beautiful dive after this back. (laughs) With his little, like, feet all swan diving in there. Feet pointed, ready to go. Shit. Um, And that's when they hear some annoying kid say, Daddy, it's a unicorn. And they're like, oh, no, the gardens is opened. And the dad tries to correct his daughter, saying, no, honey, unicorns aren't real. It's an antelope, probably, is my guess. My well, best guess. Well, actually, it's a bicorn, because it's got two horns. I wish well, he had said that. Actually, it's a centaur. <laughs> it's a centaur. <laughs> oh, man. So, um... Finally, like, Tobias is like, oh, my God, you guys, this is just a shit show. Shit, shit show. Let me handle this. So he just goes and, like, expertly lands on top of this duck and pins it down and starts acquiring it. Thanks, Tobias. And then, <laughs> thanks, Tobias. You could have just done this from the start. <laughs> I think he wanted to just watch Marco flop about. <laughs> well, that's probably true. And then he saw Axe's beautiful swan dive and was like, now we have to get down to business. <laughs> to acquire... The duck. <laughs> Did they send me geeses <laughs> when I asked 
Four dogs. Four dogs. <laughs> we did it. We did. We made a song. <laughs> um, so yeah, Tobias gets the duck, and then Marco grabs it, and they're passing it to Axe when somebody screams, Andalite! And they see a woman pulling out some sort of a gun. So they dive back into the cattails, and Marco is handing off this duck to Axe in some sort of sad water relay race with a duck. <laughs> He's just, like, football <laughs> carrying it. Yeah, he, like, and passed. then, like, passing it. <laughs> Here, take the duck! <laughs> Oh, poor duck. man. Poor, poor duck. He's just trying to live. Just trying to do its dabble. <laughs> it was, and it got grabbed. Um, but yeah, the water beside them is vaporized, and then, like, a dart whizzes through the cattails, and it's a tranquilizer dart. So there's, like, there's a lot of shit happening right now. Jeez. And then controllers start, like, splashing into the pond after them, and some of them start morphing. So one starts going to a leopard and the other one goes to an eagle. And Tobias is like, I got the eagle guy. I'm out. And Marco Ugh. starts complaining that he liked it better when he was the only one that could do this. Ugh. I, every time a controller morphs from now on, I just get so mad at Cassie. Yeah. I'm like, that, see, Cassie. that's the thing. It's like, even if you're not immediately mad at her, every time this happens, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, but like, the other thing is... Did Fizzer 1 just let anyone have the morphing ability? Uh, we'll find out yeah. a little more, but probably. Because that was, like, my big thing about last book. I was like, okay, is now that they have the ability to make everyone morph if they wanted to, are they only going to reserve it for, like, special high-ranking Yurks, or, like, how is this going to work? But it seems to be just kind of willy-nilly. Anyone can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you get a morph power and you get a morph power. <laughs> Bees! Anyway. Bees! Sorry. That Oprah gif is the best. It is. Duh. So um, Tobias starts dive bombing, dive bombing this eagle man before he could finish the morph and trying to hurt him, which is good, Tobias. Good thinking ahead. Do not wait till he's done. <laughs> and Marco dives underwater and starts holding his breath while he morphs as fast as he can. He morphs, he's almost running out of oxygen, blah, 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 but when he gets completely morphed, he pops up as Big Jim. Axe is already out of there, taking off after this leopard person, and he's fighting them, and Tobias sees, or, uh, sorry, Marco sees them as the cat is trying to drag itself on three legs under this merry-go-round, and Axe is, like, closing in on this leopard, but then Marco notices above him, there's a cougar that's about to drop down. And so Marco warns him. He's like, watch out. And this thing leaps down, lands on Axe's back. This was foreshadowed. But then Marco finds himself kind of swept away because all of these controllers that are apparently not more capable are just hitting him with whatever they have in their hands. <laughs> like anything, like cell phones and shit. One's trying to stab out his eyes with their car keys. Jesus. Yeah, it's brutal. And he's just kind of like one by one swinging them away, sending them flying across the park. And uh, then he hears this commotion behind him and he turns around and there's this goose flapping at him. And he has this momentary thing where he's like, why did somebody think that a goose was a good morph to fight me? <laughs> you were right to be scared of goose. <laughs> goose is the ultimate battle morph. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, but then the thing just flies over him. And he's like, oh. It's just a goose. Okay. <laughs> um, I did think the bullfrog was a spy for a little bit. It could have been. Yeah. For the bullfrog kingdom. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Cute. Anyway. Uh, so Marco tears off because some other controllers appear with weapons. He goes through a jungle gym, which he was like, I was made for this. My name is Jim and I live in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he climbs up th to the top of this thing in 15 seconds flat, which, like, I was just picturing, like, a small children's park, and I was like, that's a really long time, but then realized <laughs> this is a large structure. <laughs> but yeah, it's fine. And then he's distracted because he can see above him that Tobias is locked in aerial combat with this eagle, and he sees Tobias get hit and just come plummeting to the, to the tracks of the roller coaster with one oh. wing completely useless. And he starts screaming for his friend. And Tobias hits the track and is laying there, like, barely moving. This eagle is lining up, getting ready to dive. And on the other side of him, there's this train car clacking to the top. 
that's going to run him over. So his friend is basically doomed unless he can get off these tracks. And so he's screaming, Tobias, move! But he's watching, thinking Tobias is too injured and weak to roll off the track. The eagle dives down at him and is just about to hit Tobias when, wham, the roller coaster hits the eagle and all of the blood and gore and feathers go spraying over the park oh, guests who are no. riding the roller coaster. Ew. And lots of screaming happens. Oh my god. It's like when Fabio hit the seagull, only worse. I, yes! I was thinking that too. Or um, have you ever seen the video of the guy that gets, he hits like a pigeon during the roller coaster oh, and no. it like gets stuck on it they dies this thing dies uh, yeah yeah sure it's it not good <clears throat> anyways this is the part where i was like this is like one of the gorier black and white death scenes of a controller we've ever seen yeah like he just gets fucking lambasted by this roller coaster for kids yeah uh in all that chaos a red tail drops through the tracks and then takes off perfectly fine and tobias is like i stole your insane death fake out idea super cool nice i love the friendship nice (laughs) and uh marco's like can gorillas have heart attacks do you know if gorillas can have heart attacks because i'm having a heart attack right now (laughs) i love that uh (laughs) i do too um and then they're like okay this was all great. Where is Axe? And at that moment, they noticed that high above the park, one of the tram cars that, like, does those high tours is, like, just rocking and, like, f- getting completely going nuts. And the door swings open and Axe tumbles out with a cougar attached to his back. And Axe immediately starts demorph- er, morphing and shrinking and the controller just starts panicking, screaming, like, no, 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 as it's falling. And Axe is getting smaller and smaller. He makes it to duck. And the controller just plummets into an exhibit. And it turns out to be the Siberian tiger exhibit. And they don't see what happens, but they just hear lots of angry cat noises. Oh, God. Dust clouds. Like dust clouds. Like and tails, like, sticking out of it. There's no way oh. that controller lived. <laughs> yeah, that one's super dead. There's two super dead controllers in this scene. Yeah. This is when I was like, these controllers fucking suck. Yeah, they are like stormtroopers. But yeah, no matter. They're just going to continue on with their day. They're like, that'll keep him busy for a while. That'll learn ya. That'll learn ya. (laughs) I did appreciate that line. (laughs) So Marco's like, well, let's become a duck. And I wrote, (laughs) the morphing sequence went swimmingly. Oh, nice. But what really happened was he fell over and had to balance himself on his face while his legs moved further back <laughs> on his body. Oh, shit. Oh, which was great. And he keeps making comments like, this is super comfortable as his face is mashed up against the ground. <laughs> so he makes it to duck and he tries to quack, but it sounds really lame. And he keeps trying. <laughs> He's like, I'll get that quack one day. And uh, Tobias is like, now listen, Marco, I know a thing or two about birds. And if I know anything about birds, I know that male ducks aren't very good at quacking. And it's like, Tobias, what does that mean? (laughs) What does any of that mean? I just took it as like an animal fact that they kind of shoehorned in. It absolutely was that. But it was just so funny that Tobias is like... I know a thing or two about birds. It's like you've never interacted with a duck before in the entire series. Well, Why are you now giving me duck facts? Well, not on camera, but like maybe there was a pond True. near his meadow and he like watched ducks or hunted ducks or something. Maybe that's just something he does during the day is like watch ducks. Oh, like a little old man. Yeah, he just sits on his park bench and he like feeds the ducks. ducks. Anyway. <laughs> But my favorite part of this was Tobias also was morphing to duck and he just is like, okay, like forget the quacking. Let's talk about my complaints. Why are the legs so far back? This configuration is so dumb. And he's like, Marco, Marco, look at my butt. And Marco's (laughs) like, no, I don't want to look at your butt. And he's like, look at my butt. Every time I take a step, it's so stupid. It's up and down and back and forth. This is the worst. And also look at this bill. What is, look at my face. What is is this? What is going on? What is even happening with my face? And Marco's like, you have been a hawk for way too long. We have to do the governor thing now. (laughs) 
Ugh, I can't imagine uh, what a bitch fit he would throw if they morphed like a loon or something, because their feet are even further back. <laughs> I can't even walk. Yeah, they Who like they this? literally like can't walk on land. <laughs> uh, cool, man. That was cute though. I loved that. It was adorable, and again, the butt talk was very much like an early book. Look at my butt. <laughs> I look at my to. butt, Marco. <laughs> but look at it. <laughs> oh, that was cute. Do fe- do female mallards have the little curl? I forgot. Uh, I believe so. Cute. Marco will not look at Tobias's butt. <laughs> so they take off, and immediately everybody's like, "Whoa, ducks fly pretty cool!" Like we just launched straight up in the air, and it was awesome. And then they spot some seagulls who are flying towards them. And they start getting tense, like, oh, God, are these controllers? Like, let's get ready. What are we going to do? And then the seagulls veered off, and they find an empty packet of Fritos. And they watch the seagulls start fighting over this packet of Fritos. And they're like, okay, great. They're just seagulls. It's fine. Um, They decide, like, okay, well, the three of us are pretty conspicuous. Let's join a flock of other ducks to, like... As cover. I mean, so I've seen they, just three ducks flying together before. I've absolutely... I see three <laughs> ducks flying together all the time. Yeah. But, like, who am I to argue about <laughs> these ducks? <laughs> uh, so they join this, this flock of ducks. They're like, this is great. We love them. This flying is so amazing. They start talking about, like, why didn't we do this forever ago? We can fly all day. They're so good at flying. We're not tired at all. Uh, and so they just keep marveling at that until mid-morning when they take a break and then they continue on towards the capital. When they get there, they see the huge domed building and, like, Axe just loses his fucking mind. He's like... <laughs> he sees this big dome and he's like, this, this is a place fit for a governor! Oh my god. <laughs> the boy loves his domes. He loves his domes. And even Marco is like, that boy does love domes. <laughs> Um, and they, they brought Axe's dreams crashing to the ground by saying, like, hey, just so you know, the governor doesn't live there. He just works there. At which point they're like, oh, it's Saturday. The governor is probably not there. So in, like, one of the greatest plans of all time, instead of, like, coming up with some overly complex thing, they just go land at a gas station Marco leaves Axe and Tobias dabbling in a puddle out back while he demorphs in the bathroom and then goes inside and says, I'm a tourist. Where's the governor's mansion? <laughs> like, don't overthink it. Just ask. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, shit. But the lady at the counter doesn't know. Nobody else. They, they apparently went around asking everybody, like the cook and like other people. I'm, I'm imagining it was attached to a McDonald's. It's just oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so they go around asking everybody and nobody knows where it is. And so Marco defeated is walking out of the gas station and there's these two bikers outside that are just ginormous. And they're like, Hey, you're looking for the governor's mansion. And Marco's like super intimidated. He's like, this guy's bicep is bigger than my head. He's fucking enormous. But the guy just like super nicely goes, you go like south down this road and like turn left. It looks like a big Adams family house, you know, governor, good person. (laughs) Like that person. They really, I did a drywall job there and it really put me back on my feet. They're great. Aww. And Marco's like, thanks, dude, and leaves. Thanks, Mr. Biker Man. He is the coolest biker man ever. And also, I did like when the biker's giving him directions. He says, go south on the highway. And Marco's like, got it. Tobias will know what south is. <laughs> <laughs> Just nod and agree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that cracked me up. Um, so they follow the biker's instructions to the mansion, which they say was very Adam's family-esque with weird twisting <laughs> towers and vines and dark stone. Goth and blah, governor. Blah, blah. It's a goth governor. And they fly into the bushes in the middle of the circular driveway, and they're like, great, this is where we are now. And so they demorph. And once Marco demorphs, he realizes this was a thorny bush that they are in. <laughs> so they're like, okay, how are we going to break in? And they're discussing, like, okay, so what do we do? Like, it's not like we can just walk in there and blah, blah, blah. And Axe goes, okay, so, like, what does he look like? And <laughs> Tobias and Marco look at each other like, uh. And Axe is like, this is your most prominent elected official. His picture must be displayed at schools and government institutions. <laughs> And Marco's like, hey, man, I don't pay attention to school. And Tobias is like, my education took place mostly outside traditional institutions. (laughs) Rachel would know this because Rachel watched the news. You'd think. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. (laughs) And so they're like, 
no matter. This will be fine. We'll just go in there. And when we hear somebody call his name, we'll know exactly who it is. And Axe then turns to them and goes, you do know his name, right? And they both look at each other like, uh. <laughs> and Marco's like, I, I should have probably Googled this guy before we did this. <laughs> and then Tobias very helpfully goes, you know what? We'll just use finesse. It's worked for us so far. It, it won't fail us now. <laughs> So they start talking about morphs to go in there. They're like, do we do flies? No, that's probably not going to work. We'll be squished. Do we do rats? No, that's probably not going to work. Same thing, except for bigger spider. People hate spiders. And then Axe goes, you know, even if we can see as a spider, it's not like we'll know who we're looking for. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> He's so mad. He's like, why didn't we prepare so for this mission? <laughs> And Marco doesn't even argue. Marco's like, yeah, I deserved that. (laughs) (laughs) So mad. He's so mad. So Marco's feeling appropriately shamed when a limo pulls up and the driver gets out and is waiting by the car. And Tobias is like, I bet someone with finesse would get into that limo. (laughs) So the three of them have now morphed cockroach. They are scurrying towards the car. They run up the tire. Marco makes it onto the axle. They kind of lose each other a little bit. Like, they all know that they got onto the car, but they don't really know where. And that's when they start hearing some slams. They hear, like, one, two, three slams. And they're like, oh, no, you know what the fourth one's going to mean? And then they hear the fourth door slam, and they're like, no, the car's about to move. So Marco's trying to scramble through the axle grease as fast as he could, but he's kind of stuck because it's really viscous, and he's his little feet can't move really fast. And then the car starts moving, and Marco's just spun around faster and faster, like clothes in a washer. And <laughs> he's trying to, like, check in, and Tobias is like, I'm on the tire. I'm under the tire. I'm on the tire. I'm under the tire. <laughs> Get a road turtle. <laughs> And Axe is like, I don't know where I am, but it's very hot. And then he starts like, ah! Oh, no! (laughs) Oh, man. Finally, the car starts slowing down. And they're like, okay, we must be at the gate at the end of the driveway. Like, now's our chance to find some non-moving part. So they, like, scramble up the axle. Marco launches and grabs this rubber-coated wire. Axe leaps up behind him and grabs it. And then the car starts moving and poor Tobias is just kind of left behind. So he launches and misses the wire, but he grabs Axe's leg <laughs> and they're all like hanging off each other. Oh my God. <laughs> this is a cartoon. It is a cartoon. Oh um, and Marco's getting flung around like every bump they go over the wires, hitting the top of the car and then down. And Marco gets kind of knocked off. He's holding on by one leg and everybody's screaming and... Marco's, like, at this point, barely hanging on, going, like, at least we're basically indestructible. And he starts, like, listing off, like, they chop our head, we can live for weeks. They stop our heart, we can keep going. And Tobias, at the end of his, like, long list of ways roaches can survive, Tobias goes, getting squished to the pavement and all your guts on the road is not a way that we can survive. (laughs) (laughs) So they're bouncing along this road. There's potholes and rocks are pelting them and it's not going well and... Finally, it seems to kind of stop and slow down, and they're like, okay, we seem to have arrived. So they jump down off the car, the door opens, and a woman in heels gets out and almost spears Marco on her heel. But he takes his chance, he runs up, clings to the soft leather of her shoe, and then she steps away from the car. Next, out steps this wingtip shoe, it hits the ground, and Tobias and Axe run up, grab in, like onto the shoe and like run up into his pant leg. And uh, they're basically like, okay, great, we're on the governor, probably. And so they cling to the pants, they observe everything, their plush carpet, dark stained wood, shiny brass decor, blah, blah, blah. Uh, The man and woman go sit at the table, and they sit, and they sit, and they sit, and they sit. And Marco's like, how much time do we have left? And Axe says, it's been 97 minutes. And Marco's like, do we have enough time to demorph and remorph under the table? It's been a while. But then somebody starts talking on a microphone and the two sets of legs get up and head out to the dance floor where they're dancing for a while. And Marco was like, I should have been safe, but the wingtip shoes kept stomping on the woman's feet while they were trying to dance. And they made it through the first song and Marco was like, okay, great, it's over. They start up a second song. And by the time the third song rolls around, the woman has been stepped on so many times that she starts kicking the man in the (laughs) shit. And Marco's like, I kind of like this chick. (laughs) Um, 
Marco then says to Axe, how long have you been in Morph? Uh, and they're trying to find a way to bail and be inconspicuous, but they didn't have to because the wingtip shoes and the woman left the dance floor and walked into a darker and quiet room. They heard the man say how much he hated this sort of thing, smiling and asking for campaign money. And Marco's like, yes, now's our chance. So Marco starts demorphing and he lets out this general thought speak notice saying, governor, don't freak out. And the woman's voice goes, Frank, who was that? And Marco continues to demorph. And like, this is so adorable, but acts really quietly thought speaks to him. Be careful at this, like oh. barely a whisper. <laughs> I thought it was so cute. I love it. I love it too. Uh, Once Marco gets to an easily visible size, he realizes that there's two plain shoes guys in here that he spotted that have their guns drawn on him. And he asks the governor to call them off. He's like, don't shoot. And he's looking towards the handsome tall man with the chiseled jaw and the good looks who's dressed impeccably with the wingtip shoes. And he notices that the woman that he's with is this larger, frumpy, plain woman with like a gray dress and gray hair and... The woman goes, yes, I am the governor. Ha! And Marco, <laughs> Marco immediately thought speaks to Tobias. He goes, I won't tell Rachel if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist. So Marco is like begging as he's demorphing. He's like, please don't shoot me. This is fine. It's good. We're the good guys. It's fine. And once he is a boy, he's like, he looks at the governor who he now realizes is the woman. And he goes, you need to listen to me. I have to tell you things. I need your help to save the country. No, the world. (laughs) And she makes some comment about like, Oh, flattery will get you everywhere. Go on. (laughs) And Marco then gives Ax and Tobias the clear to demorph. And he notices that one of the two plain shoes guards isn't flabbergasted at what's happening. He's angry. And Marco points at that guy. He says, that guy, he's going to shoot me and then he's going to shoot you and then your husband. We got to watch this guy. And the governor tells the second guard, like, watch him. So the second guard trains his gun on the first one. And we learn that that guard who is who has his gun trained on the, the angry one, his name is Collins. And I'm going to call him that because guards one and two is very confusing to me. And that's what I had to write for a while before I remembered his name was Collins. 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 Good, good Collins. Good, good Collins rhymes with cool in a way. They both start with C. Doesn't rhyme. Once the second guard notices that what is emerging from a cockroach is a blue sencha creature, he yells, Andalite! And he goes to shoot, but Collins has already reacted and knocked the gun up so that the shot goes wild and goes into the ceiling. And then Axe knocks out the guard with the flat of his tail blade. The first one grabs the gun from the guard that's knocked out. But in doing so, he winds up stepping on the governor's husband's shoe. And he gets really angry and starts, like, wiping at his shoe. Like, what the fuck? Be careful, Collins. <laughs> so are the your controllers just completely incapable of not screaming and the light? Yes, that is their greatest Achilles heel. Yeah, I was like, is this just a completely involuntary tick? They've just got to. They've just got to, no matter They've what. They've just got to. They just have to announce Andalite if there is a visible Andalite. <sighs> it is their curse. <laughs> it is their curse. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Marco's like, okay, governor, we're going to tell you. Hey, governor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're going to tell you a story, but it's going to take a while. And she goes, turns to her husband and says, go back to the charity ball. Tell them I'm not feeling well and I won't be coming back. And then she goes, and Frank, tell them nothing else. And he walks out of the room and Marco's like, as soon as he leaves, Marco's like, wow, this guy hasn't reacted at all. And he's like, oh, fuck, that guy's a controller. And so he goes, "Okay, shit's about to go down. We need to get the fuck out of here now. And then the door bursts open. The governor's husband walks in with like four kitchen staff all holding drake and beams. And Tobias has been morphing to hork during this time. And they start firing at him. He dodges. The conference table gets sliced in half. The governor is like, oh my. (laughs) And Collins, cool Collins, doesn't know where to fire. He's like, he just keeps like moving his gun. Like, I don't know who's who in this battle. (laughs) Until... He gets hit with a drake and beam in the shoulder and goes down. And he's like, got it. Those are the assholes. <laughs> so Marco grabs the governor and goes to like bail out of this room. But she's like, wait, Collins. 
who is laying on the floor with this pulpy shoulder mess. So Marco like backtracks, scoops up Collins, and it goes crashing out of there. They run into the ballroom area. People immediately start screaming and dropping things. And then a few people pull out Drake and Beams and one of them takes aim and Collins sees that. And he just like shoots, hits him in the leg and drops them before they can fire the Drake and Beam because Collins is cool. Yeah. Um, Marco then throws him under a table, pulls down the like table cloth and is like don't be a hero man (laughs) (laughs) um and then he leaves with the governor didn't she didn't she throw a chair at at the husband guy at one point yes um i think it's at at this point where he says something like like so they go to leave like marco rolls collins under a table they go to leave this ballroom and her husband makes it out there and he says don't let her get away even if you have to kill her and that's when the governor goes like, what? And like tosses a chair. I think it's at this point. Oh, okay. Um, I thought she did something Marco, in like, the, the room. And I was like, she might have. She's a badass. I love her. She is a badass. Just from right from the get go. Yeah. She's a badass. Yeah. These action scenes were like very detailed. So it was kind of, I'm, I'm sure I missed a lot of nuance in there. No worries. It might've been in the conference room that she threw the chair. But she did not like when her husband said, even if you kill her. Yeah. I get the <laughs> feeling like she doesn't really like her husband anyway, but, you know. I Okay. I have thoughts on that. But okay. anyways, um, so Marco grabs Governor, books it out of there. They have to, like, go through another room that when they go through it, they find, like, the chauffeur and the police captain, like, playing cards together. <laughs> And Marco, like, leaps over the table where they're playing cards. And the chauffeur just goes, where are you going? And when will you be back? And the governor's like, I don't know. (laughs) She's just, Um, like, under the arm of a gorilla. Just like, I don't know. Fuck it. Whatever. I'm just alone for the I'll be back when I'm back. (laughs) Oh, Oh, It's so good. She's so cool. I love her. I love her, too. And um, so they, they're they running. Marco gets outside. He spots the limo. He's like, fuck yes, this is where it's at. Tobias is following them. Axe is in third. They can hear him kind of fighting and scuffling further back so they can hear his little hoofs clip-clopping on the floor. It's adorable. Yep. And um, so Marco just, like, heads straight for the limo, opens the door, dumps the governor in there, and then apologizes. He's like, I'm normally not this rude, but people are shooting at me. I'm so sorry. And then, completely unexpected, probably the biggest twist in this book is Tobias jumps in the driver's seat instead of Marco. (laughs) (laughs) This might be the biggest twist of the series, actually. (laughs) He's like, I saw the way you drove that tank. I'm not letting you do this again. (laughs) I will drive so much better. (laughs) Um, And the whole thing is, like, Tobias is trying to crumple his hork body in, and, like, he, like, is very awkwardly, like putting his knees up by the steering wheel. He, like, accidentally elbows the glass and his, like, elbow blade shatters the glass partition. He's like, oh, sorry. And then, like, he can't get his head in comfortably, so he just chops a hole in the roof, (laughs) sticks his head through the roof. (laughs) Oh, He's like, this will (laughs) work. Oh, my God, I can't handle it. It's so great. It This is all great. And then the last thing to happen is Axe appears. like af- He's like fighting his way out of the building. And they're like, Axe, get in. And he just dives and scrambles into the limo before <laughs> Tobias guns it. <laughs> um, and then possibly my favorite scene in this whole book, which I feel like I've already said I had a favorite scene oh, in this book. Yes. But this is also my favorite scene in the book. So... Tobias screeches off, and it's, like, basically going worse than Marco. Like, he's jumping every curb. He's hitting delivery. He's, like, trying to swerve around the other cars in, like, the drive up to this banquet hall. And he's just crashing into them, like, hitting every single one. Oh, my God. And, like, (laughs) meanwhile, in the back of the car, Marco's, like, I looked at Axe, and he looked positively joyful. Like, as if he had finally found his zen hurtling wildly in this car at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> and Axe tries to, like, stick out one foot and do this low bow to the governor. And he goes, I'm honored to meet you. <laughs> and the governor is, like, sliding around back there. She's clutching the seat as hard as she can to, like, not bang and smash around there. 
And she like pries her arm off of the oh <laughs> death grip God. off the one seat to hold out an arm and be like, shake his hand and be like, likewise. <laughs> And, like, she puts her hand back down, clutching the seat, and, like, she adds a second later, like, really, I mean it. I'm very glad to meet you. (laughs) And Axe goes, I promise to guard your life with my own. And it's, like, at this point that Tobias hurtles around a corner at, like, 90 miles an hour, skidding out, and she goes, that's very reassuring. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. It's so good. I, Axe and the governor are my favorite, favorite friend couple in this yes. whole series maybe they're so great oh, God. Oh. Oh, i love it so much I, just, I love how she didn't freak out she was just like oh it's just another like citizen hello like of course i'm happy to meet you like oh. and i love you citizen <laughs> i love you too Ren, citizen so uh tobias the chauffeur <laughs> Um, he is hurtling around. There's now red and blue sirens starting up, lighting up all around them. Police are chasing them. Not just the controller police, but also regular police because they are driving so recklessly. And Tobias, like, turns down this alleyway and just comes to a dead stop when he rams a dump truck. And he tries to back up, but then the police are behind him. So then he just goes for it. And there's like a gap between the truck and the loading dock. And he just guns it until he like scrapes it off the side of the car. Oh my God. Driving through here. And like Drake and Fire burst through the windows. And Marco tells the governor, stay down. And she goes, no arguments for me. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, a helicopter appears above them, and the governor's like, we've got to ditch this limo. It's too obvious. And Marco's like, I like your ability to think under pressure. And Tobias is like, I got it. I have the perfect spot to abandon this car. Everybody get ready to bail. He guns it towards this bridge, and when he gets towards the bridge, he swerves the car sideways so it skids out, and, like, the side of the car crashes up against the pillars of the bridge, and just dead stops them. Nice. And also stops traffic both ways. Damn, Tobias. He just, like, full-on, like, Mission impossible this car. Did. It's badass. Yeah. So, at, at, what's our vote? Who's the better driver, Tobias or Marco? Ooh. I mean, oh, God. I mean, Tobias did drive a limo, and that seems like a really hard car to drive, because it's, like, super-duper long. But Marco drove a truck. And a tank. And a tank. <laughs> Mm. And a tr- and another smaller truck that was Cassie's dad. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. I don't know. In a minivan? He drove a minivan at one point, right? A uh, golf cart. He definitely drove a golf cart. I remember that. He got it stuck in a hallway. Yep. Forklift. No, that was Rachel. Yeah, <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> Best driver is Rachel. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she that's had true. zero issues. Yeah. <laughs> and she was a grizzly bear, so. It was, and she backed it up perfectly inside the hallway. That's true, and she used her claw as, as to start the ignition at one point. That's true. She Oh, she's also driven a truck, but that was explicitly to crash it. That does not weigh on her record at all. That's true. Okay, yeah, it's Rachel, for sure. Rachel's the best driver. I feel like Tobias adapted quickly, mm-hmm. and if he had more experience, he would be the second best, and Marco would be the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Although they never let Axe drive. Uh, I mean, it would be hard to f- squish his little Andalite body into the chair, but I mean, he drove a, a, a fighter pilot. He is always very bad at driving ships. Yeah. Though. Like, he always is like, I don't actually know anything about this. Yeah. He'd probably <laughs> complain about the car controls, be like, this is all very rudimentary and ancient and. Ugh. These were built for hands that were not like mine. <laughs> yeah, so. Anyways, Rachel's the best driver. I'm glad we got that out of the way. It wasn't the initial question, but I'm glad we solved it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, they all bail out of the car. And then in, I don't know, one of the most hilarious scenes, Marco just throws the governor up on Axe's back. And Axe just goes galloping madly away while she, like, has her hands on his shoulders and her knees, like, clutched around his sides while he gallops <laughs> wildly through this, like, crashed cars and shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is, like, the second time that Axe has been ridden by a human. I figured he would be, like, way more affronted by this, but he is really not. He's a good boy. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, if I were him and, like, somebody was like, I'm going to ride you like a horse, I'd be like, well, like, you should ask yeah. first, maybe. Yeah, it's like, I don't know if we're comfortable enough as people. But he did, like, pledge his life to her, so. That's true. That's true. They are now entwined. So <laughs> <laughs> soulmates. Oh, soulmates. They are soulmates. So, um, Axe is running. Marco is jumping over all these crashed cars and like it, we just get these little vignettes of like people that are like shocked to see him or like an overturned car he leaps over. One guy has like the tiniest little dent in the bumper of his Jeep and he kicks the tire angrily and gets on the phone with like I assume his insurance people. <laughs> but then like Marco leaps over his head and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? All the while, police officers are shooting at them, and there's, like, dragon fire and bullets, and then a police officer gets on the bullhorn and is like, hold your fire, they have the governor, and this bridge is full of innocent people. And Marco's like, that guy's an uninfested cop. (laughs) And unfortunately, none of the controllers listen to him, they just keep firing into this tunnel. However, they're pretty close, uh, not tunnel, bridge. I I kept thinking it was a tunnel, it is a bridge. But uh, as they got closer to the other end of the bridge, unfortunately, the helicopter had found them again. And Marco's like looking around like, is there anywhere where we could escape like any way out of this? And he spots a yacht that's like going underneath this bridge. And he says to the governor, are you afraid of heights? And she goes like, as opposed to what? Bullets and lasers that can blow up concrete? (laughs) She's so good. And then in the most hilarious, awesome moment ever, she goes, let's do it. And Marco just like gets this sudden picture of the governor as a little girl. And he's like, she looks like Rachel. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, my God. So good. So good. I love this governor so much. And she like never tries to escape with them. She's always like, oh, yeah, there's there's guys over there. Let's let's go. The limo's too conspicuous. Like she fucking loves this. She does. She's like, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. (laughs) Marco has to shake away this image of her as a Rachel child before grabbing her and then (laughs) the Rachel child. And he leaps out into space and they drop and they drop. And Marco's like, she's not even screaming or crying. Like, this lady's a badass. Um, And as they get close to the yacht, Marco reaches out and is able to grab the mast and... It, like, bends down almost to the deck before, like, springing (laughs) back up. Yeah, it was, like, it was so cartoony. I was, like, I don't think any of that's right. I don't think so either. I could ask Matt when he gets home, but. Okay, we should. Because, like, the whole time I'm, like, that's not a thing. (laughs) I didn't even know yachts had masts. Like, I thought they were just. Yeah. And he can't, he specified, he said sailboat, and then he goes, not a sailboat, a yacht. So, like... Oh, my God. Back to Marco the gorilla. So, <laughs> <laughs> he grabs onto this mast, and th- the governor and Marco look back, and they see Tobias jump off the bridge and start morphing, and a few feet above the water, he makes it fully to hawk and just goes flapping off. So fucking cool! Then they cool. watch... Tobias is so cool. And then... In the slightly less cool, but still cool. (laughs) Axe, once again, swan dives off the bridge. He's silhouetted perfectly by, I assume, the setting sun. I don't know. And, like, it's... Okay, this is what I picture. You know the scene at the end of Free Willy where they're all sitting... (laughs) I'm going to describe it for people who don't watch Free Willy as often as I do. So... They've just loaded Willie, the whale, the orca, off of the back of the trailer into the water. He's been out of the water for a long time. He's very weak. Jesse running along the shoreline onto the rock wall that divides the harbor from the ocean is saying the magical Native American phrase. I'm not going to say it for you. I do know it, but let's just not go there. (laughs) We cut from Jesse running along the rock wall back to Randolph and his trainer whose name is Charlie. She's awesome. And Charlie turns to Randolph and says, Randolph, have you ever seen him jump that high? And Randolph just says something super mystical, like, sometimes things happen. (laughs) And then you cut back to the rock wall. (laughs) And Jesse saying the magic word, say an ah, ayu, an aesis. Okay, I did say it for you. He does his, like, epic, cool prayer thing. And then you just see Willie go leap under the water, come up above him, this beautiful silhouetted arc. Jesse does the one fist pump in the air. CGI whale. 
They edited out the genitals. The whale goes <laughs> over his head and leaps into the ocean where finally Willie has been freed. So, cut back to Animorphs. <laughs> this is where we tie it back in. <laughs> things happen. He said, I think he said things happen is the line. <laughs> Like she, the scientist, like very cool whale trainer scientist, who's a marine biologist, turns to him and she goes, "Have you ever seen him jump that high?" And he just goes, "Things happen." <laughs> but the way he says, "Sometimes <laughs> things happen," it's just like, <laughs> like shit. It happens. was way cooler when he said it. Like I, I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Sometimes shit happens. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. That was perfect. Anyways. Take that scene from your head. <laughs> that was way better than my description of Warhorse, I will say. <laughs> Welcome to Animorphs Anonymous, where we recap movies. <laughs> that I have nothing to do with the books. Okay, pivot back to Animorphs. Yes. Ax and Millie, perfect cool dive off the bridge, silhouetted beautifully. Imagine everybody staring at him <laughs> with like just like crazy stuff. Then the governor turns to Marco, like Charlie turned to Randolph and said, Can Ax and Millie swim? And Marco just answers, yes, but they both cannot look away. And then he full on belly flops into the water. <laughs> and they're watching the water and like it moments are passing, long moments. And the governor starts going like, we got to do something. We got to get him. We have to get him. And then finally they see a fin break the water and Marco points it out and he's like, it's okay. He morphed a shark. And the governor's like, that's good. I think that he morphed a shark. <laughs> so cool with it. She's like, I don't know. This is not my world. I'm doing my best. Oh my god! Just the stark contrast oh. of Tobias doing this awesome thing and then acts like being this graceful thing. And just like, <laughs> it's like, oh no! But he already had uh. his graceful moments, so he had to take one hit at least. The dive itself was very graceful. It was just the belly flop yeah. that wasn't. <laughs> Uh, the next part of this was very confusing to me. I kind of couldn't follow the action, but basically Marco slides down onto the deck, leaps over the cabin, um, freaks everybody out. There's one woman who backs up to the railing and tumbles over because she's so freaked out, and then she screams, I can't swim, so Tobias grabs a life vest and drops it off to her <laughs> in the water. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All of the screaming and running attracted attention. The helicopter spots them and comes over, and the guy starts firing the Draken beam at the boat to try and hit Marco, which leads to more screaming and running. And Marco kind of bounds down the decks, rolls the governor under another table. People start bailing. The captain runs off the boat and jumps into the water, and the yacht starts, like, losing control, and the helicopter's still firing on them. The governor starts to get up and Marco goes, stay down, stay down. But she goes, someone has to steer the boat or it'll capsize or run aground. And Marco just goes, oh, okay. Because <laughs> of course she knows how <laughs> so to do she... a boat. Of course she knows how to steer a yacht. She has to go to fancy charity fundraisers. This is probably in Governing 101. <laughs> That's what they teach you in governor's school. That's right. First year 101 yachting. <laughs> So Marco's like, okay, go steer the boat, I guess. And then Marco starts grabbing like margarita pitchers and glasses and chairs <laughs> and whatever and just starts throwing it at the guy in the helicopter. <laughs> oh my God. It's great. And uh, Tobias is like, oh shit. So he comes like hurtling back around to try and help. But as he's approaching the helicopter, the controller just turns the Draken beam to the bow of the ship and fires blowing the boat in half. Um, Marco is pelted with fiberglass and breathing in acrid smoke and he can't see the governor. He's freaking out. He starts desperately searching for her, but the boat is sinking and Tobias is screaming, move. And the controller was leveling his shot right at Marco, who was kind of stranded in the sinking boat. Uh, the controller is almost on him, about to fire, but Tobias, is man man <laughs> Tobias managed to dive in hit the guy's arm, which causes him to drop the Draken beam, and then Tobias does a fucking badass dive after it and grabs it midair. Nice. Marco's like, you and X gotta get out of here. I'm gonna find the governor. So he starts tearing through all the parts of the boat that he can reach, and finally he finds her. She had fallen through the floor and was just below the steerage. Uh, she was slumped over a table, seeping blood from a gash in her forehead. So Marco grabs her and he starts saying, can you hear me, governor? Can you hear me? And she kind of comes to, she's okay. 
And Marco goes, okay, we got to get out of here. So he starts demorphing. The cabin's filling with water. They're sinking. And both of them are just drenched and waterlogged. And Marco says to the governor, how do you feel about marine mammals? And she goes, well, I wouldn't marry one. (laughs) I mean, okay. (laughs) So Marco goes to Dolphin. The governor grabs onto his dorsal fin and they dive out of there and then go down the river while speedboats descend on the sinking fire. (laughs) She rode a dolphin into the night. Which again is like in Free Willy 3 when they had the oil (laughs) spill. (laughs) Uh, Yes. So we cut to the governor in her office in her leather chair down in coffee after coffee repeating parasitic slugs have invaded the earth and my husband is one of them. And Marco goes, yes. And she goes, well, thank God I was beginning to think something much worse was happening. We can fight aliens. No problem. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, she's super hopeful. I think, honestly, that she was afraid that she was having marital troubles. And this was like, I can divorce okay, him I don't have no to face problem. my emotions. <laughs> no, I think she was more like, I don't have to face my emotions. I can just come up with a game plan to fight extraterrestrial creatures. That's easy. I know what to do oh there. Oh, my God. Just don't ask me to talk about how I feel. Oh, my God. I would have voted for her so hard. I would vote for her today. I might legally vote and write in the governor from Animorphs whose name we never find out. <laughs> Still a better candidate than Trump, Dabs. Uh, yeah. Way better. Ugh. Anyway. Oh my god. This is, I mean, let's be real. Let's be fair and real. This is a better candidate than any candidate I've ever seen in my life. So true! Like, uh, I just, I was just thinking of, like, if this had taken place today, like, no one would have believed Marco. No one. Absolutely. No. Not a single fucking one. Like, they got so lucky with this governor. They did. And she's also great. God. But yeah. So she's ready to fight the aliens. And I'm voting for her. This September. I don't know if that's anything. Is September a thing? I don't know. Sure. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) So, Axe is there. He's guarding the door. Tobias is watching the back of the house from a window. Collins was there, too. He crawled back to the mansion, I guess. He's great. (laughs) He's great. He was there waiting for them to get back. He tied a shower curtain around his wounded shoulder and just, like, held, waiting for her to come back. And... The plan now is just get the governor to call all of the military personnel she could and see who she can trust by ordering them all to stand down and seeing who argues with her. Nice. The, Yeah. So she calls the first guy and she orders him to stand down and he argued. And when she hung up, Axe was like, he would ignore a direct order from you, his highest elected official. (laughs) And then he's like, he's got to be a yerk. He's he's got to be. There's just he's got to be a controller. And the governor's just like, eh, he's a cantankerous old coot that doesn't like taking orders from a woman. So it might just be that. He might not <laughs> oh, be a no. <laughs> So chill. Fucking hell. So fucking chill. I love her. Uh, I love the just massive feminine me- feminist message in this. Like, holy shit. Yes. Oh, man. She's so cool. Yeah. So she continues down her roster. But the two biggest winners come out of this was she had a troop that had just been on a two week long training expedition in a desert. And they're all like, like literally all of them, as soon as she's like, wait, this one troop had been on the desert for two weeks. And like all of them in the office looked at each other and were like, yeah, (laughs) it was awesome. So she calls that dude up and she's like, hey, you and your troops just got back from the desert. He's like, yeah, he's like, come to my house. (laughs) Come to my house. (laughs) Come to my house. Right and uh, the guys... My parents aren't The guy's home. like, okay, cool. Sorry. My parents aren't home. Come to my mansion. And then she hangs up the phone and starts laughing. And she goes, my gardener's going to have a fit. <laughs> I fucking love her. She's so good. She's so good. And then she has another realization. She goes, okay, wait. Also, there's Major McDonald, who's just been on some trip to Paris with some other advisors. Let's call him. He lives in town. He'll be here super fast. So she calls him. He agrees to come over. And uh, so she finishes going through a list of calling everybody, ordering them to stand down. And then a convoy of Humvees start rolling up. And Marco goes, is there any way these are the Humvees we wanted to see? And the governor's like, there's no way. (laughs) 
So um, she she explains that, you know, they wouldn't have time to muster all the troops from their desert journey. So, like, they start looking for exit strategies. And they, they're they looking out, like, in my mind. It's a cartoony, like, run to each side of the house. Like, all five of them, like, hit the window. See the convoy of Humvees. Like, hit the back door. See, like, all the police boats on the water. And, like, they go around... They are being closed in on from all sides, but one of the sides is just a single police car with sirens blaring, screeching in at like 100 miles an hour. And they're like, wait, wait, wait. They wouldn't send a single police car. These are, they're coming in as a group. So the governor calls down to the front gate. She's like, this has got to be McDonald. She's like, do not stop the police car. I give clearance for him to come in. Do not stop him. Just let only that police car in. So the police car comes screeching in. And it's so close that as the police car is screeching around the corner to go through the gate, it kicks up gravel on one of the Humvees. And then the gate slams shut behind them. And they are totally surrounded. Uh, They see McDonald get out of the car. They're like, that guy's awesome. We like him. Let him in the house. Axe Marco Tobias Collins work to clear the bookcase out of the doorway. They hear footsteps pounding up towards them. McDonald enters the office and he's followed by two other dudes and they look around and he's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Kids, governor, Collins, cool guy. And then sees Axe and he goes to like, his hand just goes to his pistol automatically. And the governor's like, don't shoot. This is Axe Emilian. He's my friend. <laughs> I've adopted him. I've adopted him. <laughs> this is my baby boy now. <laughs> He's my best friend. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) So they tell McDonald that all of these troops surrounding us, they are all enemies. They are all under extraterrestrial control and we cannot trust any of them. And he's like, extraterrestrial aliens, are you out of your fucking mind? And Axe is literally like, bruh, I'm standing right here. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> gestures to the Bruh. Andalite. <laughs> gestures gestures to all of himself vaguely. <laughs> Hello. Um, so basically, they're like, hey, can you keep the governor safe? Will we go and draw away the troops? And he's like, I don't know, probably. And they're like, all right, good enough. So Axe goes and like, I imagine very enthusiastically shakes the hand of the governor and tells her it has been an honor. Aww. And she very earnestly replies for me. Oh, I can't handle it. I'm dead. <sighs> I love them. I love them so much. Oh my god. I kind of like their friendship better than... No, I can't say that out loud. I just... I love them so much. Ooh. Just so much. They're so good. Um, Marco sees this go on and he's like, I'm gonna get in on this too. And he goes to shake her hand, but holds it for a second too long. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun. The governor seems to doze off. Her chin hits her chest and then she snaps back awake and she's like oh the coffee must not be working and marco just goes it's all right it's been a long day the kids then head out no one noticing that marco had swiped the wet gray bundle of fabric the governor had left in the bathroom go fake her death um marco walks out onto the porch barefoot his dress clinging to his legs this is one of my favorite scene cuts (laughs) ever He had morphed into the governor in the hallway outside of the office and strode out there to address all of the freaks on the lawn. (laughs) The freaks on the lawn. (laughs) Yeah. And he starts, like, he goes out there and he starts addressing them. And, like, he gets kind of freaked out. Like, the governor's voice coming out of his mouth, like, weirds him out. And then he's like, ah, get a hold of yourself. Like, you've got to do this and you've got to play it right. So he basically just starts going, I wasn't aware that there was a National Guard event happening today and certainly not on my lawn. And she demands to speak to the highest ranking official. An officer jumps out of one of the Humvees and said, that would be me. And as he approaches Marco, Marco tries to remember what the thingies he has on his collar mean for his rank. And finally, he's just like, uh, commit lieutenant, uh, sir, <laughs> sir. I didn't know there was an exercise taking place today on my lawn. And the guy sneers and goes, this isn't an exercise. This is a fully formed operation. And then for good measure, he threw in that she had, he had heard that she was strong minded and that this was a disappointment finally meeting her and seeing how unimpressive she was. And Marco realizes in this moment that this is Visor one that he's talking to, not in the normal human body that they're used to seeing, but this is Visor one. And he realizes, like, he can't give that away on his face. So he just keeps trying to, like, keep this official smile, as he calls it. The governor smile. The governor smile. (laughs) So uh, this dude orders some of the other officers to take the governor. And Marco, like, gets dragged roughly off and, like, 
gets his arm grabbed and he's like, you're hurting me. And the person's like, good. And they, like, you know, basically, what's the meaning of this kind of a situation? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Get your hands off. I, why? Why always British? Why? I don't know. Daddy. Oh, my God. So anyways, uh, she gets dragged off and then handcuffed, roughly shoved into the back of a uh, Humvee with like one of those canvas things. Uh, ankles bound way too tightly. And Marco's really trying to, like, ham it up, like, saying, I'll have your name, rank, and serial number. Initially asked for Social Security and then corrects himself. (laughs) Serial number. And he's like, I'm suspending your pay indefinitely. And the guys are like, oh, we're so scared. We're not going to get paid. Oh, sure. Yeah, we're thugs. We're idiot thugs. So Marco is laying on his stomach tied up. And he keeps complaining, saying, like, do I have to be tied up? I'm not stupid. I know an old lady is no match for three military men. And he's, like, trying to, like, roll over but can't quite get it until a few tries. And when he finally does, he comes face to face with the barrel of a rifle that one of the guys is holding right in his face. And Marco, of course, being Marco, keeps talking. And they keep telling him to shut up. And he's going, like, no, how do you? Uh." So they shove a dirty piece of duffel into his mouth. And Marco starts choking on the dust and the fabric and what tasted like an old Coke spill. Ew. It was gross. Right about then, a hork cuts through the canvas roof and drops in, knocking the gun out of the guy's hand. One of the other guys dives after it, but then a second hork joins in. There's a tussle. The first two guys get incapacitated, but the third one, the lowest ranking guy, managed to grab the gun and he's holding it to Marco's head and he's saying, you know, freeze or the governor gets it. Very old school action movie and marco looks at tobias right in the face and ever so slightly shakes his head and the guy threatens again like i mean it i'll shoot the governor and then the truck hits a pothole the guy tumbles backwards smashing his head on the crate of ammunition and knocking himself out cold they knock the other guys out and then marco of course with his mouth still all muffled up is like (laughs) like stomping his feet and like the best part here was like they're like, what did, what, did, what did you say? And then Axe goes, oh, I think he said that he enjoys having that rag in his mouth and all the flavors of it, and we should leave it there. And, like, Marco gets troll. so mad that this is when Axe learns sarcasm. Oh, my God, you troll. Such, such a good book. Such a good book. But um, they do eventually liberate Marco from his, you know, shackles his rope around his legs and the handcuffs and the duffel in his mouth and and they're like all right let's get the fuck out of here the entire convoy had followed them away from the governor's house so they are in the clear they morphed to duck and as the convoy passed through a tunnel the three of them lifted off and headed towards home we then cut to the kids all gathered around axe's tiny tv watching the news which was just showing all the shit that we missed like literal like star trek moment where it's like here's what happened while you weren't here watch it to catch you up like i love it i love it the star trek cliche so the kids are all gathered on the tv and they're watching all of these this animal fight between national guardsmen who are being herded by other national guardsmen towards a uh, yerk pool then larson's troop who's the guy that was on the two-week mission came in and started fighting there's a really good close-up of cassie biting a guy's nice. butt um Then the news also played a clip of the governor saying, like, oh, she had a crazy night, too. She was kidnapped. And then there's, like, video of her riding axe across the bridge. There's the yacht blowing up. And Jake and Marco kind of start to banter a bit. But then Cassie says, be quiet. I want to hear this. And she turns up the TV as the governor came on. And Rachel was the one that goes, the governor's a woman? (laughs) And Marco goes, yeah, of course, Rachel. Sexist much? (laughs) And, like, looks at Tobias like, this chick? (laughs) Dear God. (laughs) Um, But Rachel does not take the bait. She was too focused. And so the governor starts going through the whole thing about extraterrestrials, the Yurk invasion. She starts telling them about the war. And Marco goes, why am I not ecstatic about this? Like, this was what we wanted from right from the beginning, from day one. And Tobias is the one that tells him it's hard to be excited about an all out war. And then I actually bookmarked the governor's last words because they're good. The governor shuffled her notes, looking into the camera again. This is not the time for panic, she said. It is the time for each of us to reach into our souls and pull out the courage we may not even know we possess. Our enemy is strong, but we are stronger because we are fighting for our lives and our freedom, for our very existence. 
Thank you, Governor, the camera switched to Patricia. Axe clicked off the TV. We sat in silence, staring at the blank screen. That's the end of this book. Oh, Governor for President! (laughs) I need a shirt that says Governor (laughs) for (laughs) President. (laughs) Governor for President! Never gonna be president now. Never gonna be president now. Okay, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Shit. This was the best $36 I ever spent on one book. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> yeah, this was my most expensive oh, book. Shit. You can't buy this one, like, anywhere. I, like, I fucking, I can't believe I used to say with my mouth and my words in my face that I didn't enjoy reading Marco books. Because I take that fucking <laughs> back. Because, like, the last, like, six or seven Marco books have just been, like, amazing. He has some... Very, very good books. Oh. For sure. Shit. Yeah, very good books. Yes. Just loved it. It was way more fun. Like, I remember it being a fun book, but rereading it, it was like, it was just even more fun than I remembered. Yeah. And again, I wasn't expecting that so late in the game. Like, I thought we were out of the fun, joyous sort of shenanigans. I mean, I think it'll be like reflecting back on like, a full wrap up it'll like yeah. it's it's a lot of it i think is because of his mental state with like having his parents yeah. back and that sort of stuff but yeah. yeah we just completed the book one mission it only took 50 books oh my god but we did our mission That's from true. book one that is true yay although okay so the governor and they mm-hmm. flew by the capital which is probably in mm-hmm. the capital city of whatever state they're in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yes. That's, that's... The building had a dome. I mean, most capital buildings do, I feel like. I know. I just wanted to <laughs> just give you whatever you wanted. <laughs> just give me it all. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Even if I guess, yeah, you're not yes. going to tell me, so. I'm not. I'm not going to tell you. So here we are. Yep. I am going to um, switch out of this this particular vein of conversation. Yes. And go to, I am super glad slash moderately concerned that we never had to go the whole morphing the governor without her permission kind of thing. Did, I mean, was she in on the plan? I forgot. No, not even a little. <laughs> okay. She had no clue Marco was acquiring her. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. But, like, how did she not have, like, a panic room or something? Is that a normal thing for a governor to have? I would assume so. If you're that important of a figure and you have a giant goth mansion, Hmm. like a secret room behind a bookcase, because all gothic mansions have something like that. Oh, maybe she did, but she didn't want to show the Animorphs just in case. Yeah, true. She was like, only Collins can know where my book room is. You know, in, in the Princess Diaries... The queen and her, like, bodyguard man, chauffeur man, and they're, like, clearly, like, in love with each other? Vaguely, yes. Okay. I just had that little headcanon. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> You're glad that that uh, they didn't obtain her without her permission? Or they did obtain her without her permission? No, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to face the moral questions about that. Yeah. Because they should have, but as you know, I'm bad at that. Well, and it just doesn't really matter at this point (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah we're kind of past that yeah cassie okay i'm not glad that cassie was gone for the whole book i'm just glad she wasn't on this mission so i didn't have to deal with the questions (laughs) and also i feel like the governor would be like yeah whatever means necessary take my body i guess oh yeah yeah i I feel like she would have been cool with it maybe not like it very much but I, mean, I don't know. He should have asked, but still I'm glad I didn't have to face that. I mean, Marco <laughs> is the one that acquired Mr. Grant in whatever fucking book that was. <laughs> Marco's acquiring people all over the place. Yeah, he he has much less qualm with it than someone like Cassie would. Faux show. Such a good book. It was such a good book. Oh my god, what was your favorite part? Honestly, okay. My favorite part was Tobias actually had a really fucking sick burn. It was when they were staking out the duck pond and there were flamingos there and Tobias was like, oh, nice, we can morph lawn ornaments. (laughs) And I was like, oh my gosh. That is the greatest thing you've ever said. Sick burn, my dude. 
And it's such a one-off line that doesn't matter and isn't even acknowledged in the book, but I fucking loved it. That's perfectly fine, because, like, one of my favorite parts was him yelling at Marco, look at my butt. Look at my butt! Look at my duck butt! And he's like, no, and he's like, look at my butt! I don't want to! <laughs> and just rather not. And just everything with the governor is so good. Oh, and the, Marco's God. just like a giant gorilla. He's just, like, shoving her in, like, glove compartments and shit, and she's just like, okay! Yeah. There's nothing I can do. Riding axe, whatever. Riding axe. Oh. oh my god, her friendship with Axe was just amazing. She's so pure and wholesome. I love that Axe has a governor friend. I'm friends with the governor. I'm gonna go to her mansion for tea time. <laughs> god, I'm just like imagining him having tea with her and he just sticks his little hoof in the teacup. Oh, I can't. In the little china teacup. Oh. Just, oh. I'm dying, Alex. Oh. I gotta draw that. I gotta draw that. Oh my god, please draw that. Please have it be the most delicate little china cup. Please. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh no. Oh, and then and then Axe likes oolong better because it tastes grassy. Oh, oh no. no. Alright, well, I'm fucking dead. Thank you. Let's rate characters. Okay. <laughs> It's going to be kind of hard for half the team, but let's start with Jake. Who wasn't really in this book, except in the beginning. Except to be depressing and to yell at Cassie. <laughs> to dunk yes. on Cassie so hard. <laughs> I shouldn't be <laughs> laughing because it's sad. <laughs> uh, I mean, I liked his logic of um, sending Marco, Tobias, and Axe for the mission. Like, mm -hmm. even if Cassie were good for that mission, like... If he, if he hadn't yeah. had that little outburst, like, it still would have made sense. And that was a good call on his behalf. I almost would have liked it better if he were like, you're becoming so manipulative. I don't trust you for this mission anymore. And just left it at that. Like, that said it in front fun. of everyone. I said it in front of everybody in a very calm, not angry tone. Yeah. Just or really like, matter of fact. Yeah. That's just our fan fiction that we're writing. That's not what happened. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. Sorry. Well, what were you going to say before I interrupted? No, so no. Nothing else. I mean, he wasn't really in this book apart from that. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Four. I was going to give him a four as well. Cool. Rachel. <laughs> I mean, five, obviously. Five. Five, 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 five. Of five course. Plus. The fucking hilarious lines about, like, <laughs> I won't tell Rachel if you won't. Like, the whole, the governor's a woman. You didn't know that? God, Rachel. <laughs> God, you're so unfeminist, Rachel. Women can do anything, Rachel. Yeah. Women can be governor <laughs> too, Rachel. <laughs> oh, she kills me. I know, she's great. She kills me. She's also the best driver, as we established in this book. It's true. So that deserves a five star as well. Wunderbar. Let's talk about... Let's talk about Tobias. Oh my god. This was my favorite Tobias in a really long time. Like fucking hell like i just remember back in earlier books when he couldn't morph and he just like wasn't in on a lot of missions and he wasn't really in on the action and then when he was in on the action in like later books he was like really pissy about it and like complains mm -hmm. a lot and and this one he's just like fully like all right whatever fuck it <laughs> i'm sticking my head through this limo roof and just driving <laughs> crazy Oh, we're taking a tank now? Sure. All right. Why not? Fuck it. I'm still going to complain, but... <laughs> the thing he got most passionate about in this book was morphing a duck. <laughs> <laughs> I just love him. And I He's loved so all his interactions good. with Marco. And, like... Me too. Because, like, his last book, I thought some of their, like, banter was really forced and didn't feel natural, but, like, everything in this book was just great to me. I agree. So, yes. Five... For Mr. Five. Toblerone, of course. Five by five. And then we talk about Cassie, who was in here for all of two seconds. She bit a guy's butt. She did bite a guy's butt, which I thought was funny. Yeah. I'm still mad at her. <laughs> I'm very mad at her. I'm just, you know, internalizing it. Because we saw the effects of, of what she's done. We saw yes. all those controllers, even though they were really bad at, at morph. They can all morph now, and that sucks. And even, like, Tobias was saying at one point during this book, like, oh, I kind of sympathize with Visor 1 now because of, you know, having to face off against animals at any time and not knowing where they are, what's going on. He's like, oh, I kind of get why he hates us. 
I kind of wonder if and how the the truth is going to be revealed that that Cassie let the Marvin Cube get away. Is Jake going to blurt it out, or is she going to take the sacrifice and be like, "Hey, everybody, I did it. It's my fault," or like they're going to find out without Jake or Cassie wanting them to, or like, "Ah, I'm just so curious." I don't know. I don't know. Three. But yeah. Sure. Three. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, let's talk about Axe. Forty ten billion. <laughs> <laughs> he was fucking great in this book. He's so good. So good. Oh, perfect. And there was a lot of instances too of him like using human mannerism. Like he shrugged, just something he's picked up since he's been on Earth, oh. or he nodded his head. Like he is just great. A wonderful boy. Marco says he would like us to leave the rag in his mouth because he is joining the <laughs> Oh, Axe, your jokes. They're Naughty so good. Boy. Friendship with the governor, 10 out of 10. Fuck yeah, beautiful, graceful swan dives into bodies of water. Hell yeah. <laughs> Morphing a shark for whatever reason. <laughs> it's been a while since he morphed a shark. Yeah. A shark. Then the governor's bewilderment at, like, that's good, I guess. It's good that you morphed a shark. <laughs> I'm glad right? he didn't break all his legs and die. <laughs> all ten of them. <laughs> Five stars for him. Obviously. What about Marco? <laughs> Just, it's so interesting to see Marco, like, not have a care in the world now. Because yeah. it's always been so, like, I'm worried about my mom. My mom's dead and ugh, everything sucks. I hate this war, blah, blah, blah. Now he just has his mom back and his family's back and he's just like, I still don't like the war, but I'm good, man. Let's fucking do this. He's basically like, I want to dance around and sing and everything's great now. Yeah, it's interesting to have a character that like has completed their character arc, kind of. He's just like there because that's his job. Yep. Helping his friends, helping the human race. Yeah, and I, I really appreciated that he still is like pretty quick on his feet like his plan with the governor like it's not like he's become dull because he has what he wanted it's just he's still smart and like can plan and all that stuff but he's just happy now yeah and he has no other troublesome emotions to get in the way and he's still incredibly capable and yeah yeah it's that is now that you mention it i i can't think of many other instances in books where like before the big climax evil is you know blah 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 Mm -hmm. plot points resolved a character that is just like peaked like two seconds from the end of the book yeah (laughs) that's a really interesting arc (laughs) yeah but i loved him so five yeah five for me i loved him all right well any last thoughts or queries or i'm kind of shocked uh applegate hasn't hopped back in to write books but she will yeah she will i know you said she comes in at the very end but i don't know what that means oh wait i get to look at the next book it's gonna be another one that you're gonna be like what my sacrifice (laughs) oh okay a little friend the raccoon friend a little raccoon friend oh oh the third one is really cute (laughs) it's just like an antelope with a raccoon face and tail and it's really adorable Aww. Aww. Everyone has nightmares, but what happens when the nightmares are real? Oh dear. Ax, no! <laughs> this one was just the countdown has begun. That's really anticlimactic compared to that. <laughs> Here's a book about shenanigans. Have fun. Here you go. Have a good time. Okay, anyways. Yes, no more thoughts from me. I am good. No more thoughts. I have nothing to talk about this episode but i may talk about things from this book on a later episode (gasps) really that's all i'll say about that oh no we're so close (laughs) to the end and i have so many questions still oh we are so close i yeah you really i'm really not answering anything for you i (laughs) know so much is revealed and so much has yet to be revealed let's duck out of here oh no (laughs) <laughs> finger guns, finger guns, oh my finger God. guns. <laughs> oh, I can't even. I can't even. So, where can they find us? They can find us at anonymousanimorphs at gmail.com oh. or on Facebook 
at Animorse Anonymous, which is our main page, which you can like. But if you want to have cool conversations and talk to cool people and do cool things, you have to go to our super secret, super awesome group, which is facebook.com slash group slash Animorse Anonymous, which is our Andalite Bandalite page, which is what I say because English is hard for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at Animorse Anonymous or on Tweetor at Animorse Anon. I love how you say Tweetor. Tweetor. Or Discord now, which Casey can tell you how to do. We have a Discord. It's called Animorphs Anonymous Discord. Um, if you want access to that, you can join the Andalite Bandalite page. The link is in there. Or uh, you can email or message us and we'll hook you up with that. And if you want to find our podcast elsewhere, we are on basically all the podcast hosting sites because we are amazing. Oh my god, tell me about your comic. I have a webcomic. It's called Beside You. You can go check it out at bsideyoucomic.com. Chapter 3 has started, and it's going to be awesome. So go look at it. Absolutely. I have been enjoying the sneak peeks because I am a patron. Yay! Yay! Uh, If you like comic books, like what Casey just said, but different, (laughs) and you like comic books from the 90s in particular, especially ones that start with superb and end with boy... (laughs) Then you can find me as a sometimes third person host on Cadmus 2 Crisis. This is a Superboy podcast. Nice. So that's what I do. Let's dabble oh. in leaving. Oh, shit. You're so good. <laughs> find us on the web. Second. Oh, because webbed feet. I explained the, feet. the joke. Let's skip out without paying the bill. Oh, no. I'm quacking up over here. We did it. Let's get out. Okay, bye. (laughs)